We're here at the ITU studio in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Ms. Salma Khalife, who is International Affairs Coordinator for the National Research and Education Network in Mexico, and she's also Chairman of the Council Working Group on a Stable Constitution. Ms. Khalife, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. I'd like to start off by asking you, what is the need to have a stable constitution? Well, I have to go back in years uh, to tell you what the stable constitution means. Uh, in the ITU, uh, they have uh, produced a constitution. And uh, back in the years, they decided that this constitution should not be modified every time the plenipotentiary is met. So uh, they did a first ex exercise to, to produce a new document that uh, perhaps would not be ratified. Uh, so they created the convention, but in the end, they decided, the plenipotentiary uh, representatives decided that this uh, convention was also to be ratified by their uh, member states. Uh, this is the second time we have this exercise. Uh, uh, the plenipotentiary uh, representatives uh, and member states of the Union uh, decided in 2010 uh, in Resolution 163 from Guadalajara that uh, there was a need to review the current status of the Constitution and see if by separating those uh, organizational procedures and articles uh, in a different document, they could give more stability, meaning not modifying this uh, Constitution uh, continuously uh, and provide a uh, document, a single document to ratify, and other documents that could support the uh, organization of ITU. Uh, so they created this group, which I'm chairing, and I have finished my work uh, in April of 2013. So now I'm reporting to the council the results of the group. So do we have a definition of what is stable and, and what would be uh, fundamental to include in a revised constitution? Uh, from the point of view of the group, uh, they were discussing uh, if from a legal framework what does stable and fundamental meant to all those different uh, uh, member states. And we find that uh, w they might have differences in how they uh, decide st uh, a stability and uh, fundamental. Uh, but in the end, uh, there were common um, decisions that uh, fundamental would be those principles that uh, needed to be in the Constitution because they were the substance of uh, how the ITU will wor would work, and those uh, provisions that uh, were related to how they would be organizing and how many times they, they will be meeting or they will be uh, um, uh, uh, preparing for conferences or so, would could be left in another document that would not be uh, and those articles would not be as fundamental as those uh, provisions that leaded the way the ITU should uh, work t together with this uh, membership. Now you say the Council Working Group uh, has uh, finished its work now. I wanted to find out from you, what have been the results of, from this exercise? Well, uh, it, it has been an I interesting experience because uh, we had uh, almost uh, 32 member states participating in the group in the five meetings we had for the past three years. And this uh, working group uh, cooperated a lot in building a, a document that could separate those fundamental and stable provisions and separate those who were on the, 
decision of this group not stable and fundamental. And we produced a document which uh, still has uh, some questions to be answered, but our mandate didn't allow us to modify any text of the Constitution. So we, we found repetitions in certain provisions. We found that uh, um, there was no uh, answer to the question of, is this Constitution going to be ratified or it's just an amendment, a new constitution, or it's an amendment to the previous constitution. So those questions will be answered perhaps in the plenipotentiary meeting of 2014. I was going to ask you finally, what are the next steps that council needs to take? Uh, the council is currently um, reviewing the, the final report of the group. Uh, many administrations are doing com and making comments on w their views of how we should move forward, but uh, there are um, a diversity of possibilities of how to move forward. One, a very simple one, could be uh, despite all the work we have done, we could still go back to Article 55 of the Constitution and try to um, set a more strict rule of when uh, the amendments should be made, perhaps eight years, 12 years uh, before uh, an amendment can be approved. Or we can go uh, in the way of uh, um, separating these two documents and uh, either ratifying the amendments or, cons or approving a new constitution. It will depend on how uh, all those uh, member states that did not participate in the working group will take these uh, proposals into their countries and how they will um, react uh, as individuals in the plenipotentiary meeting where they will have to decide if, if we go in a simple uh, uh, way or if we try to discuss further if the final uh, document being produced by the working group was um, the, the final document and they approve it straightforward in the plenipotentiary meeting. Ms. Khalifa, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you.